Hi, everybody. It is still June 15, 2021. I want to thank my subscribers for leaving comments related to Magneto underneath a recent video that I posted. So I checked out Magneto, and yet again, it's another way to control brains and behavior of animals, and we are animals. Magneto protein, genetically engineered. But in this article, which I will link to below and you can read the details, I found something that, well, it may be connected to that virus that's going on right now. Perhaps even the, you know, uh, shot. Okay. Researchers in the United States have developed a new method for controlling the brain circuits associated with complex animal behaviors using genetic engineering to create a magnetized protein that activates specific groups of nerve cells from a distance. You do realize there are an awful lot of methods in which they can control the brain. And when you look at all of those mm, behaviors in an awful lot, of those animals, uh, two-legged here we're talking about, that, well, not too long ago, we didn't see those behaviors an awful lot because people would know that, well, if I behave that way, I'll be shamed. So I don't. Well, now the masses are behaving in a way that most of us just don't understand. Hmm. Well, when they can control people's brain, control their behavior, control how they feel, and even control how they think, that might be an explanation of what we are seeing. I have a playlist on this channel. It starts, uh, the title starts with 5G. I think the microwaves. Wi-Fi, all of the biological effects, and the effects on your brain. Even looking at the screen while you're watching this video, they can emit electromagnetic frequencies right through that screen that can affect your central nervous system. Check out the videos if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so how the brain generates behavior the ultimate goals of neuroscience. Remember that for the next part of this video. The ultimate goal of neuroscience is to learn how the brain generates behavior so man can control that brain. Researchers have developed a number of methods that enable them to remotely control specified groups of neurons and to probe the workings of neuronal circuits. Some of the methods, optogenetics, enables researchers to switch populations of related neurons on and off uh, on a millisecond by millisecond time scale ah, with pulses of laser light. Another is chemogenetics, engineered proteins that are activated by designer drugs and can be targeted to specific cell types. What are they putting in all of those drugs that the FDA approves as safe? The new technique, Magneto, not only non-invasive, but can also activate neurons rapidly, reversibly. So you can click on the link below to this article, read the details. I am kind of a detail freak because the devil is always in the details. But for the purposes of this video, magnetoprotein activated by magnetic field. I'm just going to read excerpts. This is important here for what we're dealing with right now. The researchers inserted the magneto DNA sequence into the genome of a virus, then injected the virus into the brains of mice, then showed that applying 
a magnetic field to the brain, they were able to control the cells producing nervous impulses. Yes, you can read the details if you want to become a scientist, or, but to determine whether magneto can be used to manipulate neuronal activity in live animals, they also injected magneto into zebrafish larvae, targeting those neurons in the trunk and tail that normally control an escape response. What were they able to do when these zebrafish larvae were put into a magnetic, magnetized aquarium? Ah, they got the escape response when there was no need to escape the coiling behavior. So, now, um, they also injected magneto uh, into freely behaving mice into their brain the uh, stray atom, what is it? Stratum, 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 sorry, stratum. Of freely behaving mice, which is that deep brain structure containing dopamine producing neurons that um, involve the reward and motivation um, makes you feel good? Okay. Well, they placed mice and those with this magneto uh, protein. They split the mice into two different sections, one magnetized, one not. But the mice were, they could freely move about. Um, most of the mice hung out in that magnetized section getting their hits of dopamine. Neuroscientist Steve Ramirez of Harvard University who uses optogenetics to manipulate memories in the brains of mice said the study is badass. He said previous attempts using magnets to control neuronal activity needed multiple components, different systems, whatever, yada, yada, which, you know, each component could break down. But now the system is a single elegant virus that can be injected anywhere in the brain, making it technically easier. And that behavioral equipment was cleverly designed to contain magnets. Nanoparticulate nanotechnology is very dangerous. All of this technology could have been used for such good. Ah, but when evil is in control, technology is not used for good. Okay, so the behavioral equipment was cleverly designed to contain magnets which appropriate, where appropriate, so that the animals could be freely moving around, yet remotely controlled. Okay. The many ways in which we can be remotely controlled. I want to thank my, oh, by the way, here is a study of this uh, genetically targeted magnetic control of the nervous system. And I'm not even sure if this is the study that The Guardian was writing about, but it is a study of magneto, which they were able to validate the non-invasive magnetic control over neuronal activity by demonstrating remote stimulation of cells. So when you think about that injection right now going on, hey, get a donut free if you get that injection. Or how about if you get it, you may win, win one million dollars. Oh, the many gifts with that injection. 
They so want people to get it, get it, get it. All the celebrities putting out their get it, get that, get that shot. Why? Why? Well, I could say a lot more, but this is YouTube, the uh, censoring platform, so I can't. But I think most of you get this, a virus injected into the brain. And while those injections have uh, been known to cross the blood-brain barrier, hmm, and those injections of late are actually causing an awful lot of people to experience symptoms of a virus. Okay, I want to thank my subscriber for sending the uh, a five-minute or six-minute excerpt of Dr. James um, Giordano's talk at West Point on neuro weapons, neuroscience, the goal, how the brain controls behavior so man can control man's behavior. I have the full talk on my channel, this channel. I will look for it and I will leave the link below. It's a very important talk that he gave. I'm not, I don't, this was posted. Modern War Institute, no, so two years ago. The brain is the battlefield of the future. And Dr. Giordano is, well, neuroscientist, DARPA. He's got all of the credentials, been an insider, and here he is. You will hear the six minutes. What we're here to talk about today. Sorry. You will hear six minutes of his one-hour talk. Please watch the one-hour talk. It will be linked to below this video. And you will begin to uh, question. Are, are some of these techniques being used? on the wider population. Okay, here it is. I hope you listen carefully because what he is talking about, they can do. Are they doing it? I have no doubt. What we're here to talk about today is the fact that the brain is and will be the 21st century battlescape in many ways. End of story. You will encounter some form of neurocognitive science that has been weaponized not only in your military career, but in your personal and professional lives. It is valid, valuable, and already an operational play. The brain is the current and future battle space. What's new about this is the in-close nature of this. Increasingly, we're not seeing these things as weapons of mass destruction against gross aspects of the population. More specifically, perhaps, might be targeting individuals on a level that allows either direct attribution or covert engagement with non-attribution. If we talk about what brain science is, let me just give you a little bit of brief background on this field that is now called neuroscience. As a titular field, as a named field, neuroscience has only been in existence for 40 years. I know that because I've been a neuroscientist for about 38 of those 40 years. Increasingly, it is becoming an international, multinational, global, and independently exercised event and endeavor which increases the capability of the brain sciences to develop not only new theories, but ever more sophisticated tools. So, how then can we use these elements as weapons, means of contending against others? Formal definition of a weapon, probably the one that you've heard about most recently, most contemporaneously in, in the literature, is the possibility to use some form of directed energy to affect physiology peripherally and also to affect the physiology and health of the brain. Case in point here, U.S. Embassy personnel in Havana and possibly in China. 
Clearly, one of the things we can also do is transcranial neuromodulation, the idea of going through the skull to modulate the node network activity of the brain, to implant certain brain machine interfaces. These are many of the DARPA programs that you may hear of now, probably the one that is most notorious, is something called the N3 program, which is the non-invasive neurosurgical neuromodulation program being run by their program manager, Dr. Al Mundi. The idea here is to put minimal sized electrodes in a network within a brain through only minimal intervention to be able to read and write into the brain function in real time, remotely. And then of course you also have the things that are a little bit more traditional. If we talk about things that can be operable in the biochemical space, we ordinarily talk about drugs, bugs, toxins, and ever more we're considering devices. I can disrupt an individual from the level of their cell to their system and disrupt individuals on a variety of levels, from individuals all the way up to the social fabric. Target a specific individual, change or eliminate that individual with very little attribution and trace, and be able to leave prior to any attribution. Drugs can be exceedingly specific, and as I'll show you in a moment, can be very, very much used to individualize weaponology in terms of what we call precision pathology or precision effect. And by affecting the way that brain is built and the way it functions, influence in ways that are kinetic and non-kinetic, the attitudes, beliefs, thoughts, emotions, activities. Look at the power that understanding tools and techniques of the brain sciences afford. We also see the use of biodata as a viable weapon. Manipulating biodata so that I can then put into your particular medical records subtle information that may change the disposition of whether you're sick or not, change how you're treated influence the postures that go to you in terms of insurance, care, viability for military service. By altering that information, by changing those data, by purloining those data, I essentially change the you of you. And I can do that in very subtle and insidious ways. Furthermore, I can do that on a variety of different levels that can affect key individuals, so that in fact your medical record changes to thereby render you incapable, or at least invalid to be able to serve in a way you're serving. Or I can do that on a much larger scale, groups, populations. And if I change those data, I change the way you're being regarded and treated. And I can do that in one of two ways. I can do it in such a way that you're gonna be regarded in a negative sense, or I can do it in such a way that I'm gonna treat you incorrectly. If I say, for example, you have a particular allergy, or you have a particular disorder, you will be treated for that, and that could then harm your health and your stability in both a short wars approach as well as a long wars approach. One of the newest developments is that nanoparticulate matter can be stabilized for distribution. If you're not aware of what nanoparticulate matter is, it's that matter which exists on a scale of well, 1 times 10 to the minus ninth. Very, very small. Smaller than a cell. And we can manufacture materials that have discrete properties that can be controlled by virtue of bioengineering and their physical chemistry. I can create small robotic units, controllable robotic units at the nanoscale, and that these two can be aerosolized to create a nanoswarm of biopenetrable materials that you cannot see, that can penetrate all but the most robust biochemical filters, that are able to integrate themselves through a variety of membranes, mucous membranes, and wherever, mouth, nose, ears, eyes, can be then uptaken into the vascular system to create clumping, can affect the vascular system of the brain, or can directly diffuse into the brain space, and these can be weaponized. And they can be done in such a level that their presence is almost impossible to detect, and as such, the attribution becomes exceedingly difficult to demonstrate. We've come to the precarious position of opening the proverbial can of worms of if, how, in what ways, to what extent, and when these techniques and technologies will be used in weaponized intelligence and national security agenda. Are civilian ethics even viable any longer? And if we engage military ethics, what military ethical principles will we engage?